that's the good stuff right here. Hard, soft literature. I mean, sort of, kind of. I tell you what, I think I'll think I'll check it out. You know, I'm not normally one to destroy books, but so I'm just kind of big for it. Hi, uh, folks. Fruit and Doggy here to do another book discussion, and this time, this is a very pun-heavy book, starting with the title. It is Myth Nomers and Imperfections by Robert Asprin, not Asprin, as I want to pronounce it. And <coughs> this is the eighth book out of a 19 book series. When I was first getting it, I realized at the time that it was definitely later in the series, but I didn't realize it was that large of a series that I would be missing another <coughs> 18 books on top. <laughs> but, <coughs> excuse me. The title, the cover, it seemed interesting enough that I just couldn't not get it. And on the front cover it mentions, Stranded in the myth-begotten world of Perv, the most demonic dimension of them all. And I, I just appreciate the puns. I'm not typically a huge fan of puns. It can be very hit and miss with me. But I thought for a fantasy book, it might be pretty funny. It may not talk itself too seriously. It might not have a stick up its butt, and it might <coughs> be able to kind of hit that nice balance. And as always, I'm going to read the book summary real fast. <coughs> Excuse me. How could such a thick-headed demon be so thin-skinned? But Oz, A A H Z, Ski's friend and mentor, has taken exception to something his partner has said and left in a huff. It was just a myth understanding, but now it's Skeeve's job to apologize for his thoughtless behavior and convince his scaly cohort to rejoin the firm. So Skeeve finds himself in the missing perfects home, I swear, perfect or pervert is the word that keeps coming to mind for me, but home dimension, the worst neighborhood in the multiverse where jokes are a felony and courtesy a myth demeanor. So, <coughs> What the book is suggesting is that, or what that summary suggests is that uh, it's going to be a bit of a bizarre world situation where if you are polite, if you're courteous, if you show generally good manners, good social decorum and behavior, then you're going to be looked at as an anomaly, as a freak, and you're going to be punished for it. And I think the summary oversold that idea as I was reading through. It didn't really convey that. I mean, when he was polite or wasn't uh, behaving per the norm, he stood out, but not that much. He wasn't that bizarre of a person. He definitely wasn't being hauled off to jail because he said please and thank you. <coughs> but... Uh, it is clear that this home world, <coughs> this world in another dimension, was definitely, it was uh, very rude, and it, it wasn't welcome to strangers, that's what I was trying to get at. And I will mention this book was published 1988, and it is exactly 200 pages long. And I should be upfront that with this book, I actually didn't made it about halfway and then I gave up on it. The main issue and what made me give up on it ultimately was the main character. <coughs> I found him to be very unlikable and inconsistent as a character. And what made him unlikable is that Despite, uh, throughout this book, it made reference to his previous adventures, how much he's learned <laughs> that he originated in basically a very far isolated kind of community, low technology, nothing 
that amazing or impressive and he got pulled into a world grander and larger than he could ever imagine and yet in this book it seemed as if he always had a chip on his shoulder like he took offense easily that he didn't let things shrug off his shoulder he didn't brush it off didn't let water you know water off a duck's back it really got to him and I found that especially puzzling because he he knows this person he knows uh, what people of that characteristic that uh, species I guess is the best way to put it can be like <coughs> that they can be very abrasive and <coughs> stubborn and polite and so when he goes to their home world and he's confronting that over and over and over again it just seemed odd that he wasn't adapting more readily more easily especially since he's supposed to have all of this experience dealing with a wide range of people dealing with all sorts of difficult situations that he's uh, very crafty and intelligent and that's how he's been able to make it as far as he has <coughs> And honestly, I thought he was quite bumbling. And that's what I mean by the inconsistency is it talked about his feats. It talked about how he basically uh, was walking a delicate line between being in charge of a merchant class and then also <coughs> dealing with like the underground and the mafia and uh, balancing that delicate walking that uh, fine line and maintaining that delicate balance uh, those competing interests and yet as he came into this new world I mean fair I mean to be entirely fair he's never been there before so he's gonna be a little bit of, of a fish out of his fishbowl situation he's gonna be in a strange pond but I would think that his previous experiences would lead him to be more adaptable, to be more quick on his feet, to just not keep blindly stumbling into easily avoidable problems and situations that were his own, uh, of his own device. And I just think that was completely unnecessary. I mean, he's going to a world where people are, shall we say, big city syndrome, where Everybody's a jerk. Everybody's rude. Everybody's impatient. Nobody has any time of day for you, and they're not going to tolerate you any nonsense or any bumbling, <coughs> any any sign of incompetence. And yet, I don't know. I just, I mean, I would think that would be sufficient cause to create plenty of conflict that would give enough potential antagonists enough problems enough issues and he still has to figure out a way how to track down the person he's looking for so he's got two different problems facing him how to find somebody one person of the same race that he's uh on this world of so they blend right in so he's got to find them and then also dealing with all of these and possible antagonists but he causes problems for himself. It's not really the environment. It's not really uh, adversarial people or situations. He shoots himself in the foot. And yeah, I mean, that just, I really got annoyed by that. I got annoyed by his smarmy attitude, how just he complains so much and I just really got tired of it. So I gave up on it. This was a period of time where I was reading several books and recently got burned on a couple, having finished them all the way through, giving them the benefit of that. It's like, oh, just, just keep plugging through, give them the benefit of the doubt, keep going. And I decided not to do that this time. I thought, you know what? I've done that enough times and this one's not holding my interest. And I did look into the reviews in the series, that's how I found out there's 19 books in it, which is kind of absurd. <coughs> and it seemed that this book was somewhat the start of a slight decline. 
it was starting to lose steam. Uh, the earlier books in the series seemed to be held to higher regard overall. But uh, so held to a high regard to start, hit kind of a low point here in the middle, and then somewhere towards the latter part portion, it did pick back up and seemed to hit a better stride again. <coughs> But even though these books are only 200 pages of whack, even though I could sort of see what the author was trying to get at, how it could be sort of an interesting situation, uh, I just can't say that I'm incredibly interested in this setting. I mean, character, and I should mention that with the setting, it blends, because it's a multiverse, multiple worlds, it does blend magic, advanced technology, all uh, blends of fantasy creatures, <coughs> super advanced civilizations, so on and so forth. At least as best as I can tell, reading only about 100 pages out of thousands of pages of work. But the idea of a main character who is the backwoods person who gets yanked in and, you know, even though they are <coughs> on unfamiliar ground, they just so happen to be crafty and clever enough they can navigate they were through and somehow rise up and it's like I've seen that so many times and I'm not willing to invest that much into a 19 book series just to get a feel for how the story progresses how you know this protagonist works his way through all those different situations I mean if this one had really knocked my socks off that's something I might have been willing to do but <coughs> or even if I'd started at the very beginning and it's like <coughs> saw that promising start I might have been willing to at least go through a couple of books but no I can't really say it was that enticing and it's not that unique to me <coughs> excuse me if that general description sounds like it could be of interest to you though a situation where all these different civilizations are kind of smashed together through, uh, you know, time warps and gadgets and magic spells. People are going around through different uh, worlds. You know, that might be, this might be worth pursuing. <coughs> I will, of course, re-mention this and warn you that there does, it does seem like there's going to be a low point in the middle for at least a couple of books. But anyways, I can't say I recommend at least this book out of the series. I kind of get even halfway through, I gave up on it. So perhaps with this book series, burn a couple of middle pages or a couple of those middle books and just start an ending. I don't know, that seems to be the, <laughs> the overall impression I got from it. But anyways, folks, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you around.